Hi, my name is Helena, I'm from Yummy Italy. Today I'm going to show you a top view of how to make a perfect egg pasta dough for wonderful handmade pasta. So what do we need? We need eggs, we need flour, so zero, zero flour, which is a soft wheat flour. We need a bench scraper and we need a fork. And those are our uh, ingredients and our equipment. Now, um, I already mentioned in previous um, videos that when you're making pasta, first of all, the first most important thing is kind of back uh, health and position. So if you're working on a low surface, be sure to keep your feet hip width apart, bringing your pelvis to align your back. And so that way you're not going to put any pressure on your back. Now, um, the, the recipe for handmade egg pasta is 100 grams of flour, so that's zero, zero flour, soft wheat flour, and one medium-sized egg. One medium-sized egg corresponds to 62 to 65 grams of weight with the shell. So if you're going to go with a smaller egg, you'll just have to reduce the grams of flour by maybe um, three grams to four grams. If you've got a larger egg, then you need to increase that by again three to four grams, okay? But a lot depends on the consistency. A lot will depend on the humidity in the room. A lot will depend on the temperature. A lot will depend also on the warmth of your hands. <clears throat> so, um, the first thing to do is we're going to put our flour on our board and we're gonna work quite close to us so that we don't put pressure on our back. Now we're going to do a bird beak, like a little bird, bird beak like that. And we're going to make a crater. Now the important thing is that we make a crater that's quite wide, because otherwise if you put your egg in, you don't want a funnel so that all the egg kind of comes out. You want the egg to be able to move around. And so making a wide crater is going to enable you to do that, okay? We also want quite high walls on our crater because if, it's, um, if they're too low, then also the egg might escape and that's, um, that's another thing you don't want. Okay, so I'm gonna put my bowl away. Now I've cracked my eggs already into, uh, into my bowl and excuse me for the lighting, but we're on lockdown here and so I'm doing this from my kitchen. Um, you know, uh, we're on, like I said, I'm in Italy, we're on lockdown. I think this is my fifth week uh, or sixth week. I can't actually remember, completely lost um, all sense of time. But anyway, here I am. So um, yeah, I've cracked my eggs into a bowl. Normally I would crack them, especially when I'm teaching, um, one egg at a time. And the reason for that is so that you don't get um, any uh, off egg in your entire mixture. Now these are brand new fresh eggs, so I kind of didn't worry too much about that. But I cracked them into a bowl also to make sure there are no, um, no eggshells and just to make sure they're kind of healthy looking eggs. Now, we actually have really lovely eggs here in Emilia Romagna. Um, the chickens are fed beta carotene or corn, which makes the yolks really yellow. Okay, so I'm going to pour that in there. And I'm gonna start with breaking my yolks, first of all, like that. And I'm gonna start whisking. So I'm gonna whisk I mix in my yolks with my, with my whites. And it's just like scrambling an egg. Okay, so that's kind of, so the egg, the white and the, and the, um, the yolk have now been mixed in. Okay, funnily enough, in Italian, they say a rosso del uovo, which means the red of the egg. And I'm not quite sure why they call the yolk that, but they call it red. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start bringing in my flour from the inside. I'm never going to use the point of my fork on the board because it's going to scratch my board and chisel away at it. And then I'm going to end up with a chipped board and potentially wood in my pasta, which is not what I want. So I'm going to bring that in like this. Bring the 
this in like this. And I'm going to keep mixing that until it's nice and smooth, but I don't want to over mix it either. Because pasta is all about texture. Especially when we're hand making pasta on a wooden board. Then um, we've got a lot of texture with that. And also we want, you know, we want to kind of keep texture. We want to keep something that's going to give it bite. And so that means also not overworking the egg with a flour. Okay, so it's starting to get quite stiff now. You can probably see. Starting to move itself. You can see it's starting to move, stay stuck to the fork. And when it does that, we can start throwing in the flour. like so and so I'm going to mix that all in now as far as I can with the with the fork until it becomes completely impossible to mix anymore okay and it's got to that stage it's kind of moving itself so I'm going to cover my fork with flour I'm going to bring that off this is a really easy way to work as well so you don't get your hands dirty Okay, I'm going to take off the rest of the egg on my fingers with the flour. That just makes it much easier. You don't have to worry about kind of going and <laughs> washing your hands all the time. Okay, so I know this is where the magic happens. We've got our mixture. We're going to use our bench scraper. We're going to work at 45 degree angle. Never straight, because otherwise we're going to chip our board. And never like too flat, because we're going to chip our board as well. But we, we won't be able to get away, uh, get the residue away. So I'm going to move and clean my board. And I'm going to, especially at the beginning, I'm going to have to go quite hard. So I've got to get rid of the egg residue that's on my board. Okay. And so now what I'm doing, you kind of have to think of this as a the egg monster that's sucking up all the flour. And so all I'm doing now, if you see, my board is perfectly clean, okay? And all I'm doing, I'm letting the egg absorb the flour all by itself. any stray flour that's on my board together and this is a really easy way of bringing your dough together like I said with very very um, sort of very little possibility of getting your hands dirty and if your hands are clean that also means no waste flour flying around now the consistency at least to look at is very similar to short cross pastry and all the egg has absorbed all the flour and when there's no more flour flying around then we can start bringing that all together with our hands and this might get a little bit sticky depending on how dry my dough is okay so I'm going to start bringing that together
There we go. So like I said, the um, consistency and the hydration of your dough will depend very much on um, the humidity in the room, the temperature of the room, and the heat of your hands. And of course, the surface that you're working on. Wood is the best, to be honest, because it's room temperature. And it doesn't, it doesn't make the, the dough cold. The minute the dough becomes cold, um, the gluten has a tendency to not relax as much as you would like it to, especially when we're going to start kneading. Okay, and I'm just bringing away, I'm just scraping away any kind of residue now, which is still, they're still quite soft. I'm going to bring all those bits in. What I don't want are hard bits in my dough. Don't want any hard bits. Because otherwise, if we have hard bits, then when I roll out my dough, it's going to break. So if I can't, if these bits are not sticking to my dough, then that means they don't want to stay and we're going to get rid of them. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this now. And that's kind of my residue. Okay, so I've brought my dough together. It's, um, it looks like this now. Or like that. Now this is the point where I'm going to go and wash my hands just to get off any residue because we don't. Okay, so I'm back. I've washed my hands. After you wash your hands, it's really important that they're dry and body temperature. Because if they're not dry, then you're going to think your dough is sticky and it isn't. So you just to make sure, shake them off a little bit to air dry any kind of excess humidity. And we're going to start kneading. Now, when we need a dough for a sfoglia or a trip, typical pasta from Emilia Romagna or egg pasta, we want to make sure that the fold is always in the same place. And the reason is that afterwards, when we roll out our dough, if the, if the creases are in different places, it's more likely to tear. So the way we make sure that we need and our creases are always in the same place, we use our thumb as a guide. I'm going to fold over my dough and I'm going to push it back, okay? I'm going to use my thumb as a guide. I'm going to fold over my dough over my thumb and I'm going to push, push it back. So I'm not actually folding the dough over on itself. I'm just folding it over my thumb and pushing back. And I'm going to do that so you can see just a little bit like that. So my thumb, my thumb was here. Okay, my fold is now here, but I'm going to push my fold back like that okay so I'm gonna need that now you do a quarter turn so you do one fold over your thumb or two or however many you fancy and do a quarter turn there and a quarter turn okay I have my own rhythm now and so I'm quite quick at this And so we're kind of, what we're looking for in terms of texture, and I'm taking away any residual crumbs, is a kind of cellulite thigh texture. And so I have got my own specific rhythm which I've developed, but what's important, like I said, is that you always have the fold in the same place. Okay, so I'm going to knead that now for about 10 minutes. If you find that your dough is really dry, and you can tell whether it's dry by when you fold over, whether it will kind of come come away. I mean, it's still kind of quite st sticky, but if I fold it together, squeeze it together, and it comes away, pops away immediately, it's too dry. So what do you do? You go to the sink, you wet your hands, you shake off your hands with any excess water, you come back and you knead your dough with your humid hands. 
And you do that as many times as is required until when you squeeze your dough together, it doesn't pop apart, okay? Okay, so I finished kneading my dough now. And the kind of consistency that we're looking for is kind of this kind of slightly lumpy cellulite thigh consistency because we're going to put it to rest and when it's rested it should be lovely smooth baby's bottom okay if we push your finger if we push our finger in inside into the dough it should spring back okay obviously not completely because it's dough but um there should be kind of a pretty good spring to it okay so it's a bit sort of spongy so um you should also kind of find these kind of little white dots all over probably the lighting is not brilliant so difficult to see but um, that's the kind of consistency you're looking for. So I'm gonna roll a kind of little baguette. I'm going to pinch my dough in the middle from all sides. I'm gonna turn it over. And I'm going to put it on a plate to rest now. So I'm going to put some flour on my plate, like so. Uh, some people wrap it in plastic. Um, I really do try to be very environmentally uh, friendly or environmentally conscious. Um, plastic obviously is quite difficult to avoid altogether, but in cases like this, I think, you know, it's very, very avoidable. So I'm going to put it on a plate with a little bit of flour, like so. And I'm going to put a bowl over it. Now, the old grannies used to put it on their board and put a bowl over it on their board. The only problem is that the board absorbs humidity and um, it's then difficult to roll out your, uh, your dough because it might get sticky. So I'm going to leave that now for at least a half an hour. You can leave it for half an hour, an hour, two hours. Anything over three hours and I would suggest you put it in the fridge. Um, if you're going to put it in the fridge, you can do. You can leave it overnight. The only important thing is that you take it out about three hours before you're actually going to use it. So it, it reaches room temperature. OK, so I'm going to leave that now to rest and then we'll roll out uh, when that's rested.